Today I wanted to make a video on how to make SVGs in Adobe Illustrator for Cricut specifically. And this is great if you want to sell SVGs or if you are looking to be a cap artist. So if you don't know what that is, I have a video all about my first month on the Cricut Contributing Artist Program, also known as Cricut Cap. So if you are looking to sell your SVGs or upload it to Cricut, this will be a great video for you. Now there are a lot of methods on making SVGs, but the way I'm going to show you today is either typing out completely in Illustrator or using Procreate to vectorize and add it to Illustrator. So I'm going to show you both methods. Let's say you have an illustration in Procreate. Now the best way to do this, honestly, is to just leave it black and white outline, don't do anything else to it because I'm gonna show you exactly how to take this into a colored layered SVG, but it's easiest if you just start with the black and white and do everything else in Illustrator. I'm just going to export this and I'm gonna hit share. And down here it says PNG file. So you're just gonna hit that and that's gonna export each layer as a different file which is ideal, and then I'm gonna airdrop it to my computer. So now it's pulled up into Illustrator. I'm just gonna size it down by holding Shift and Option to kind of scale both of them at the same time. I'm gonna move it over to the side so you can see what's happening. I have an action for image trace, but if you don't have that set up, just go to click on the file and then hit image trace, and then it's gonna do its thing. But I'll show you what my action looks like. It does the image trace options and it expands it, I think. Yeah, expands and then it ungroups it and I will show you what that looks like. So I just hit the play button. I'm going to go to the next one, hit the play button, go to the last one, hit the play button and then close it out. I'm going to hit Y on my keyboard to select all the whites and remove those. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that literally every single layer is going to show up as a different layer on Cricut and it's going to be scattered all around on the mat when they go to make it. So if you want things to stay together and not move, that is when you, I just call it command A, but it's a compound path. So I'm going to start off by just making a compound path of the whipped cream because I want all of that to stay together. Now, whether or not I make this a uh, path with this or not, we'll go through that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to piece everything back together. Now these ice cubes I'm going to redo because I don't really like the shapes that they turned out. So now I'm going to select just the ice cubes. I'm going to turn the opacity down. I'm going to hit command two to lock it. And I'm going to come over here to the rounded rectangle. I'm just going to make some. Okay, that's really rounded. I don't need it that round. I'm just gonna then make that like that. Boop, boop, boop. That's about the same width as that. All right, now I can hit Command Option 2 to unlock and then hit Delete because that was the only thing locked. And now with these guys, you can see that they are a single line versus double outline. That means they need to be expanded. So you're just gonna select them and hit Object Expand hit OK. And now when you go to outline mode, you can see they're the actual outline. I've actually made this SVG already. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it into here so I can have the colors already done. First things first, I want all of the black to be one outline, but you can see there are some overlaps here. Actually, I can see what I did. I wanted this to peek out of there. So we are going to make that a little bit bigger. We're going to come in. We're going to actually use the smooth tool, uh, shift S to get to the smooth tool. And that kind of rounds those corners out. Okay. As I'm editing, I already remembered that I forgot something. So I want to show you how to use the simplify tool. All you do is select the layer you want to work with and then right click and hit simplify. And then it shows, um, like you can really take it down to like no nodes or as many nodes as possible, like as many as there already are. I just like to kind of find the sweet spot where it doesn't alter the image too much. Like it keeps its shape, but it does get rid of a lot of those nodes. So that's one way of doing it. You hold down like the command, you can see I have a lot less nodes than I did when I first started. So that is a really cool way to clean things up. So you want to check the fonts that you're using because sometimes they have a lot of nodes and it just makes things slower to cut and harder to cut. So it's best to have like as simple of designs as possible. So I just wanted to throw that in there. It's about to thunderstorm again. So 
I'm gonna keep on editing. For this one, it's actually pretty easy. All you need to do is select this and go hit N on your keyboard for the pencil. And you're just gonna go like that. So now they are like behind it. And then for this, you're gonna hit Shift M or what is, where is that tool? Shape Builder tool, Shift M. And now with uh, that selected, you can see you have all these like spaces you can click on. If you hit option, you're deleting. So I'm just gonna hit that and it deletes that path that was behind that intersected basically. So that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna keep the whole outline black and then we're gonna fill in the pieces with color like you can see off to the side. Now, what I find to be easier is to just move this off and then I'm gonna select this and hit Shift M. Instead of hitting option this time, we're gonna do um, just regular where you can see the little plus sign there that adds in a fill. Now you can actually come in here and do it with the other two, but I need to select different things for this one. So now I can hit I on my keyboard to color drop it. So now we've got that. All right, I'm editing and I wanted to add that the reason you are doing this now versus keeping the white pieces from the very beginning when you image trace is because if you do any simplifying, any editing, any moving of any nodes, it's so much easier to just hit Shift M and then hit the button and you fill in that space with the sh Shape Builder tool versus having to edit and crop and like use Pathfinder tools to make sure everything's perfect if you edit anything. So this keeps it so that the piece is the exact right fit within the boundaries of the line, if that makes sense. And that's ideal for layering. You don't want like little pieces here and there that are under the layer, if that makes sense. If you've never used the Shape Builder tool, I highly recommend it. It saves so much time and it's so easy to use. So definitely use it. It's great for SVGs. Now I'm gonna put these back on top. You can see they're transparent, but the reason I did this was so that when it filled, it didn't go around the ice cubes. It just filled the whole thing solid. And that's exactly what I wanted. Um, now I'm gonna hit Shift M. Now you're gonna just do that. And now with all of those selected still, I'm gonna hit Command A because those all need to be one path and not like floating pieces. I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna basically select all of that and hit Shift M. I'm gonna do the whipped cream, the two sides, and the two insides. Okay, so select the two straw pieces, hit I on your keyboard to turn it pink, and then I'm gonna hit Command 8 with that selected to make that a compound fit. I'm just gonna select the inside whipped cream, that's gonna be white, and then these two pieces over here are gonna be the same color as that gray, and so with those two selected and this selected, I'm gonna hit Command A so that those pieces are together. All that's left is to get all the black pieces selected. And I'm just gonna select everything and then hold Shift down to unselect or deselect the other colors. So now if I delete, you should see that it just has the black selected. So now in the Pathfinder tools, you're gonna hit Unite to weld those together basically and have them be all one solid piece. So now when you go into expand mode, it looks exactly the same as when we started, which is good because there's no pieces that have moved or anything, but you can see everything's united and there's not any overlapping pieces. So the layering and things like that get people really tripped up with Cricut. So in Cricut, it's called welding. In Illustrator, it's called compound path. Okay, so the ice cubes, since they're all right next to each other, it made sense to just weld them. They're all the same color. They are pretty close together. Someone would just cut out one piece of vinyl and it would cut all of those in the same exact spot. Sometimes what happens when you use the Pathfinder tool, instead of making a compound path, it makes it a group, which I don't really want that. I want everything to be one layer because this is the top layer. This is what's gonna keep everything in place. So I want this to be all one layers. So just the group selected, I'm going to hit Command Shift G to ungroup it and then Command Eight to make it a compound path. So now you can see I have my, I'm gonna move the outline to the very top. So I have the outline layer and my ice cubes on top so it doesn't have to get cut out and like perfectly aligned to the coffee the more you have that needs to be perfectly aligned it can cause some issues so that one is just one layer on top that seems to be okay um that would go right on top of the brown and then you have the straw and then you have the coffee itself you have the lid 
and then you can't see it, but you also have the whipped cream. Now, if someone's doing this on a white background, they wouldn't need to do that. They could just leave it empty, but if they aren't, they have the option to use white vinyl. I think that's a pretty good example of, it shows you how to make it, but also um, shows you how the layering should be. Now, I don't group it um, when, I, when I upload it. I just leave it as is, and I don't leave anything grouped, but for the sake of keeping my uh, layers organized, I'm gonna keep it grouped. Now I wanted to show you if you were making a text design solely in Illustrator, what you would need to do. So I have two different versions of like wavy text. Um, this one's made on a path and this one's made with a warp tool. Um, but for both of these, you can see they don't look correct when you go into outline mode. So the most important thing, if you are using text in Illustrator, you need to outline them. So that would be Command Shift O that creates the outlines, but you can see with this Empowered Woman one, it didn't really work correctly. So with this one, you're good to go. You can Command Shift O that, and it creates the outlines, and it looks exactly like how you want it. With the warping and any like effect tools, I found that it just is easier to hit expand appearance, and then that creates exactly how you had it. But now everything's grouped, and I don't really want this all grouped into one thing. So I'm gonna hit Command Shift G to ungroup it. But for this design, I don't want someone to have to open up Design Space and have like, what is that, like 50 layers? Trust me, it's so much easier to edit things in Illustrator than in Design Space. For this design in particular, I'm gonna have each word be a compound path, so there's only four layers. So I'm just gonna select them and hit Command-8. And you can see over in the Layers panel, it's getting much smaller. And if I'm ever unsure if I selected all the letters, I just delete it and then undo it. So that one is good to go. I'm gonna select them all and ungroup. And you can see it brings up all those letters. Technically, I could upload this. It's technically usable, right? But it's not the easiest thing to use. Let's say you wanted this to be a design where every letter was a different color and it repeated the process or whatever you could do it like this where you can easily compound those ones so that it's not so many layers and so like you can compound those or whatever um or you could just group all of them and kind of have them organized that way basically if someone were to open this they're gonna say oh i don't have those colors i want to change it all to something and you want to make it as easy as possible for them to alter it to what they want it to be the best solution to this would be to select everything and group it so that each one is a grouping but again where i can make it simpler i i do well let's say i wanted everything to be like that and a compound path. Technically in design space, they could go through the process of making everything a different color and then duplicating that. And I think that's just the, the better solution because you have it easy and ready to go for someone who doesn't wanna take the time to edit everything. It's also flexible enough where if someone does want to, they could color it all. When I uploaded this, I did it all one color so that I didn't have to worry about the 50 layers. I think that would just be the better solution, honestly. So now you can see I have my three compound paths over here. I'm gonna group that for simplicity sake. And then we will change the colors over here too. So those would be my two designs. You can see everything's nice and tidy. What's left to do is to change your artboard titles um, to the names. The artboards are named, then you can export it as an SVG from here. I have a whole video on why I do this. It honestly saves a lot of time because you name it here and then export it and you can quickly rename the files. So I will link that video up here somewhere. Definitely watch that video if you wanna see how to speed up the like file prep process. So this is the basics of making an SVG. It's pretty straightforward, I feel like, but maybe it's just because I've been doing it for a while. So if you have any questions, let me know, I'm happy to help. I guess the biggest takeaway is that you don't want five 5,000 layers because the more layers you have, the slower it makes design space and the more issues people have to deal with. Like you don't want someone to have to spend 10 minutes working on one of your files just to use it. You want it ready to go for them and to make it as easy as possible. You really want your design to have different color letters. I would see about how you can do it where there's not a hundred layers. Is there a portion of the design where you can compound path and make it at least a little bit more workable or no? <laughs> Pay attention to the layers palette and if you see 
your design has 100 layers, then you need to go do something about it. So it's not a pain in the butt for everyone to use. You wanna think about the end use. Are people really gonna have 20 different color vinyls? Probably not. Okay, so here is kind of a real life practice. Um, here is one of my designs. You can see that I have two different color greens and a red. What I've done is I've made compound paths of all the similar colors. You can see it like this. So each layer is a different color and that works out pretty well for a design like this. It would be fairly simple to edit this if they wanted it different. Um, it'd also be fairly simple to make this design. Now another one I have is this checkerboard. And again, I compound and path every similar color. So those ones, those ones, Essentially what's going to happen is they're going to go to make it and this is what their mats will look like. You can kind of also um, think of it like that. So each layer is a different mat, each color is a different mat, um, and how will they look on each mat. Now this is fairly simple to make. You just cut off the squares slightly bigger than they are and place them in the spots. No big deal. Same for this, same for this. Now for this, I would cut out two squares basically so that it cuts out those whole things and then lining things up would be pretty easy they wouldn't have to do a lot of work to get this lined up they would do the red then add the pink on top they would do that right there and then they'd be able to slide these other pieces in and they could do it one at a time if they cut it out one at a time i just personally wouldn't cut out like eight by eight sheets of vinyl for all these things when they don't really need it but I know a lot of people do it that way. And this would be fairly simple to line up. You can kind of work your designs back to the way they're supposed to go to kind of know how someone would make it. Everything's a compound path. We've got Farm Fresh and Open Daily. They are the same color, but I did them on different layers just in case someone wanted to make them different colors. It's a quick fix. Oh. Okay, here's one where I did, I wanted different colors, but you can see it's only for one word. It's not the entire design. So this is, I think, fairly reasonable. It would take a couple seconds to merge that all into one layer if they wanted it all one color. And it's not a big ask to have four different colors. Um, that would actually be probably pretty simple. Now, do they have those exact colors? Probably not. At least it's not 50 layers, you know what I mean? So this was an area where I was like, nope, I really do want the different colors and it's not gonna be a huge deal if they have those separate layers. And so what I did was I grouped those so that when it imports, those at least are all together and it's not like a bunch of layers that they have to go find the pieces and weld them. This is another one where I wanted every color to be or every letter to be a different color, but I think it works out pretty well because it's, again, not very long. You got some colors that repeat and it should be pretty easy to put together. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments and I'm more than happy to help out. I hope you learned something new today. Hopefully this kind of showed you how to put layers together. Hopefully I did a good job explaining, but yeah. So hope this helped. Um, have a good day. Bye.